ways that it can be shaped. So going into this weekend, as the mm -hmm. amendments are going to be put forward, is there anything that you would put forward that could actually pass? Or is this, are we basically looking at a foregone conclusion that no Republicans will be able to get something changed in this bill? I don't think we're necessarily in the amendment process looking at a foregone conclusion. Two of the things I'm going to look to try to amend the bill to is to expand the use of these dollars for broadband deployment, particularly in rural America. There is no specific broadband dollar. There are no specific broadband dollars in here. Important, and that's a bipartisan issue. The other thing is infrastructure. We're getting ready to do a big bipartisan infrastructure package. Let's use some of these dollars to fill that gap that we always have with the gas tax to pay for this. And so I think there again, another bipartisan issue. Some Senate Democrats are calling for automatic stimulus payments, everybody. And that's great news because this means they could receive a stimulus check very soon. Now before we get into the video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell. Because in this video, I'll be discussing the latest news about our third stimulus check of $1,400 and $2,000. My message to our politicians is to pass a stimulus relief bill. Send out the $1,400 stimulus checks as soon as possible. The great American people need help now. If you agree with my message, folks, then, then leave a comment down below saying, I agree. And I also uh, want to... Uh you know, people you're about to meet, the millions of people who are going to help with this, I think, with this check, that's going to make a big difference in terms of their lives. And people in the country are hurting right now with less than uh, two weeks from enhanced unemployment checks being cut out. And uh, 7 million kids don't have enough food. 13 million people are behind in their rent. And the American Rescue Plan, I believe, and according to the polling data, the vast majority of Americans believe is essential to giving them some help and uh, to turn it around. And I think it's going to provide immediate relief for millions of people that uh, are going to be able to use it in a very constructive way and also grow the economy in the process. But it's essential getting kids back to school safely. It is also getting a lifeline to small businesses, many of whom 400,000 have gone under, affecting the entire community. And also everybody, tell me in the comments, do you qualify for the third stimulus check? In order to qualify for the third stimulus check, you must be making $75,000 or less each year. And so as again, this is an academic discussion. Uh, you deserve our thanks uh, and our support. And uh, I'm going to hand it back to Cedric so uh, we can hear from you all while the press is still in here. With, uh, our ranking proposal on the Senate Budget Committee is process, which um, we had hoped would uh, be going a little bit smoother than it is right now, but that has everything to do with the Democrats. And uh, we now, it's now five and a half hours actually since the almost five and a half hours since the last vote, vote started. Uh, and because there was an amendment that we were prepared to offer that actually had bipartisan support, the Democrats have uh, gone back uh, behind closed doors and, as uh, Senator Graham pointed out, tried to get the president on the line to pressure uh, a couple of people uh, not to work with Republicans. And on an amendment, frankly, it saves $100 billion and makes a lot more sense when it comes to policy. So we're, uh, we're stuck right now where we are. and. Um, and I hope this is not a sign of things to come, but uh, I do feel really bad for those uh, Democrats who have tried to work, reach out and work with Republicans. Uh, there was an effort made, I think, as you know, early on, uh, there were a number of Republicans who came up with a proposal that's significantly smaller in terms of its overall price tag than the one we're debating today, but at a size that uh, most analysts and economists uh, now believe is much more aligned with what the need is out there. The Democrats' $1.9 trillion wish list is a bloated, wasteful, uh, and very partisan bill. And it's really unfortunate at a time when uh, a president who came into office suggesting that he wanted to work with Republicans and, and uh, create solutions in a bipartisan way and try and bring the country together and unify, uh, the first thing out of the gate is a piece of legislation that uh, simply is uh, done with one party rule without you know consultation with Republicans or consideration of our ideas um, and, uh, and a huge price tag 1.9 trillion dollars with lots of goodies in there for Democrat special interest groups we think that's uh, really unfortunate and uh, as I said I hope it isn't a sign of things to come because I do believe that 
uh, Republicans are here to try and solve problems for the American people. And dealing with this pandemic is problem number one. But dealing with problem number one means vaccines, it means distribution of vaccines. A group of Democratic senators sent Joe Biden a letter Tuesday, outlining a plan to bolster the bank counts of Americans that are struggling economically because of the pandemic. Now, the effort folks, led by Senator Ron Wyden, calls for recurring stimulus checks and automatic unemployment coverage that will be tied to economic conditions. The letter read, The crisis is far from over and families deserve certainty that they can put food on the table and keep a roof over their heads. Families should not be at the mercy of constantly shifting legislative timelines and solutions. Now, these Democratic senators are calling for the automatic payments to help those Americans who won't get unemployment insurance because they have seen their hours reduced. The letter states, not only do these payments keep families out of poverty, but they act as economic stimulus by increasing spending and supporting jobs. When the CARES Act, when the CARES Act relief checks ran out, poverty rose, and many, and many families saw spiraling debt. Automatic stabilizers will give families certainty that more relief is coming, allowing them to make the best decisions about how to spend their relief payments as they receive them. Now, the letter has been signed by Senators Sherrod Brown and Bernie Sanders. Elizabeth Warren and Ed Markey, just to name a few. Now, it's not clear how much the recurring stimulus checks would be for, and it appears that the group may have a tough road ahead after Biden and other Democrats bowed to party mem bowed to party moderates on Wednesday by tightening eligibility for stimulus checks, as leaves prepared to move their $1.9 trillion bill through the Senate. At the same time, the White House and top Democrats stood by progressives and agreed that the Senate package will retain the $400 weekly emergency unemployment benefits, including the House passed legislation. Moderates have wanted to trim those payments to $300 after Republicans have called the bill so heedlessly generous. More than 16 million Americans would no longer qualify for a third stimulus check under the stricter eligibility parameters endorsed by President Joe Biden this weekend. Under the latest proposal, Americans earning $75,000 or less would still receive the fully promised $1,400 payment. But the checks will phase out faster for individuals at higher income levels than the diversion passed Saturday by House Democrats, with, individu with individuals making $80,000 a year or more, and couples making $160,000 a year or higher no longer qualifying for the money. The House version of the bill would also send the $1,400 payments to individuals earning seventy-five dollars or less each year, but the money would phase out slower with the eligibility cut off at $100,000 for individuals and $200,000 for couples. Now, if you receive supplemental security income, either you or your representative payee must report the gross wages to Social Security. Now, because SSI is a needs-based program for people who are aged, blind, or disabled, the amount you can receive is based in part on the income available to you. That's all the news in today's video, folks. Hopefully, you guys found this video useful and helpful.